I remember with the um, with the He-Man figures. I remember being enticed whenever my mum and dad went to do the weekly shop at Tesco's. That when you first walked in, they put all the kids' toys right near the front of the store. So, I, in my mind, every week I was allowed to go and buy a new figure to keep me quiet and stop complaining while they did the shop. I think it, I think in reality it was probably like once every four or five trips to Tesco. So I probably had four or five tantrums, and then once in a while I got a new He-Man figure. <laughs> but I definitely remember it working on on that basis. And they're always coming from the same <laughs> same store. So you've had a cartoon, which I don't I don't know if the cartoon was actually called He-Man, or I think it was called Masters of the Universe. Um, but He-Man was the um, the sort of the star of the show, and every week they probably have an extra new character, either good or bad, show up, which the episode would be based around, and then probably in a few weeks or after that, that figure would be in the shops. <laughs> so all the kids would want that figure, because it was the latest, coolest one, and all the parents would despair and just think, how is he really that different from the ones they've got already? So, <laughs> But honestly, when you're, you're five years old, it's it's very important that you you know you have the exact one. So. It was, with that, it was definitely like playing toy soldiers. It was definitely like you'd, you'd have little scenarios where you'd have the goodies and the baddies, and Perhaps the goodies had to go and rescue somebody who was who was trapped. I um, I think that was one of the major like the He-Man figures and stuff. I was, I was quite attached to. I was, I remember when um, like the next big cartoon came in, probably I think probably about eighty six, eighty seven, and Thundercats was a big, big thing to hit. And all the other kids in my school loved Thundercats and they loved the cartoon and all the figures came out and He-Man was just, say it was an old hat, and I. I was the other way. It's probably like the first time in my life where terms of setting the tone for the rest of my life that the old stuff was better than the new stuff and I didn't like change even as a six year old. <laughs> and I was just I remember going around a friend's house and he used to have a he used to have a suitcase just full of every He Man figure in the world. And then one day he didn't. One day his suitcase was just full of fun his his parents had bought him all these Thundercats figures and I was just it's not as good, it's not it's not the thing. <laughs> we need to keep the He Man figures. I assume you don't still have them. I have... Don't, I don't have any of them. Um, I'm trying to think if I have any of those type of things at all. Uh, with the He-Man stuff and the, the 80s Master Universe stuff, so it, was, it was quite tacky and plastic. And so a lot of it probably just broke or expired. It's, it didn't look like stuff that was built to last, you know. That was probably part of their, their agenda, make it so it breaks so somebody will go and buy a new one. So I think there was a character in He-Man, I can't remember what his name, somebody would know, um, which was like a, I think he was like a little floating wizard. Like he, um, he was, he was pretty funny. It was like a sort of half size, almost like dwarf size character, but he had no feet. He was, he was, he had a, a big red hat. Genuine, I'm not making this up. He had a big red hat and he had a sort of red cloak on, and I think he had a big black circle, and he didn't really have a face. It was kind of like a dark shadow with eyes. <laughs> Um, but I remember this being the toy I wanted for an awful, awful long time. I'm sure, I'm sure of this. And I might be getting this mixed up with another figure, but there was definitely one that, whereas most of them just had like a, the only action they had was an arm that you would pull back and it'd spring forward, or you'd twist the waist and the waist would flick around. This one particular one had, um, it was like a, not a rod, but almost like um, a sort of uh, like a cable, effectively, with teeth through the middle of it. On a, on a sort of ring pull, and you would pull it very quickly, and it would make the character spin off really quickly. It'd be like a sort of more crazier movement. So if I had one prize memory, it'd be definitely acquiring that figure and just constantly playing with this ring pull and making this thing just dance off. But yeah, I probably, that, I guess I'd have to offer that. I always like things that moved. <laughs>